Today, I'm testing two unique or rather different bullets. That is the Winchester USA Ready 124 grain uh, 9 millimeter bullet and the Hornady Critical Duty 220 grain flex lock. This is 45 ACP. This is 9 millimeter Luger. They're both plus P and they're essentially both hollow point bullets. Well, what makes them different or unique? That is the fact that both of these bullets have inserts. The Winchester and the Hornady. And these inserts are both uh, designed to ensure that the bullet expands as it passes through a barrier such as thick clothing, um, glass, whatever it happens to be. And that insert is used because it's quite common for the hollow point bullets to otherwise clog on their way through that barrier and then effectively act as a somewhat slightly jagged full metal jacket as they th move into the target itself. Well, we're going to be testing these two bullets in my pack T test protocol, and that includes precision, accuracy, consistency, and terminal performance. Precision and accuracy come from my bullseye target placed at 15 yards. I'll be scoring that uh, bullseye target. That gives us our accuracy score. Precision comes from the extreme spread of a five-shot group, and consistency is from the lab radar chronograph and it is the consistency of the muzzle velocities given in standard deviation. Terminal performance is one shot into clear ballistic, ballistic gelatin. I'm using 20% NATO block, 16 inch by 6 inch by 6 inch block. Now this is the first remelting of an otherwise brand new block that it had oh, about six rounds or so put into it. Um, and as you'll notice, as these um, blocks become melted and remelted again and again, they kind of lose their clearness, um, become a little bit opaque and ultimately kind of yellow or almost orange in color. Still completely valid for all of our testing, just maybe not quite as exciting, but I think it still looks uh, pretty good uh, and serves for a good test today. Well, let's head out to the range and see how these two bullets stack up against all the other bullets that I've been testing over the years. Twelve seventy six. Five. Five shots all recorded, 12.4 feet per second standard deviation, average muzzle velocity almost 1300 feet per second, 1296. Hold that one. Sure enough. That was good. Oh, nice. Oh. 
man, that's five. Wow, really nice. 1.7 feet per second standard deviation. All five shots have been recorded. 1,030 is our average. Excellent ammo. Boy, that was very consistent stuff, that's for sure. I pulled one on the target. I saw it go left. I'll take account for that. Time to move to the ballistic gelatin. A little bit on the left, but not bad. Go to that upper corner. Pretty good. Pretty good. Nearly identical penetration in this gel block. This is the first time I remelted this particular gel block. And it looks like, and we'll get a better measure though, at, at about 12, 12 and a half inches for each of these. The 220 grain Hornady on the bottom, darn near the top, uh, is the 124 grain Winchester. Entries, Hornady, Winchester, 45, 9 millimeter. We are seeing some fragmentation in that Winchester bullet. That's where it ended up. And there they are from this angle. You can see that flex tip on the Hornady on the bottom. Well, let's review the results, starting with the pack part of our test, precision, accuracy, and consistency. This was the bullseye target shot with that Sig Sauer P320. We scored 44 points uh, with zero number of uh, bullets impacting the absolute bullseye, but we did get one in the 10 ring, and actually all of the rounds impacted in the red. The... Um, Extreme spread of these rounds was 1.899 inches, 1.9 inches for that five-shot group, fired again from 15 yards. Consistency 12.4 feet per second with an average muzzle velocity of almost 1,300 feet per second, 1,296. In the ballistic gelatin, this bullet did okay, but as I pointed out, uh, it did fragment. It lost some of its weight along the line. This bullet retained 85% of its weight and expanded 154% of its original size. One thing I will note, though, is that its retained length was very short. Some of the papers I'm reading indicate that that's pretty darn important to... Uh, uh, toward the lethality of these handgun bullets. The Hornady Flex Lock did pretty darn well on paper, except for the one that I pulled. That was me. I pulled it far to the left. I called it immediately, as you might have heard. Uh, and so I'm giving two different extreme spreads. One of the extreme spreads is 3.75 inches for that five-shot group. It includes all five, including the one that I messed up on. And then the four-shot group was 2.265, or two and a quarter inches. Uh, slightly larger, though, in all cases, even the four-shot group, slightly larger than what I was getting with that 9 millimeter, where we did count all five automatically. All five were good shots. Interesting, if you were watching it, though, I uh, started kind of putting all those rounds into the same place with this 45 with rounds, I believe it was rounds four and five, both hitting almost in exactly the same hole. So that was good. Uh, the score on the bullseye target, not quite as good. 43 points with none in the dead bullseye. Four of those five, the good shots that I took, were all well within the red. Muzzle velocity on this 220 grain 45 ACP bullet was 1,030 feet per second on average. 
with only 1.7 feet per second standard deviation. This takes the cake. This takes the prize. I, I don't think I've ever seen a factory ammo especially that is that consistent. Is it a fluke? Maybe so, but I just grabbed five rounds out of that box um, and they, they really performed excellent. So kudos to Hornady uh, on that. Now let's talk about the terminal performance. This bullet uh, retained all of its weight and in fact what you probably saw uh, in, that, uh, in that footage is that it even retained and kept pushing ahead that flex lock point, that little insert. Well now that I pulled it out of the gel, uh, the flex lock insert is separate but I still have it. Uh, and as I said it retained essentially 100% of its weight, 99.9% .9 of the weight. 145% uh, expansion. Uh, that's not really too impressive though, but it does have a nice uh, retained length. The shank is nice. And um, you know, both of these bullets both penetrated like identically 12 and a half inches in that ballistic gelatin. The final score for this Hornady bullet was 422.5 points. It's a very good score. Uh, while the final score for the Winchester um, 124 grain bullet with that uh, insert in it was 385 points. That seems to be another very good score for the 9 millimeters. I don't know if it's even possible for the 9 millimeters with this scoring rubric to get into or much into the 400s. This uh, scoring and the, uh, the penetration, the expansion, which is very, very highly weighted, really uh, looks for a lot of expansion. I don't even know that a 9 millimeter could expand enough to really get it an, a fantastic score with this sort of protocol. So we'll bear that in mind as we assess these. Both of the bullets did pretty darn good. There's some really excellent bullets out there and uh, I don't know this uh, the Hornady uh, I just didn't get the expansion out of it. Maybe I'm just getting so used to how these things are scored that I look at it and I'm not too impressed uh, by the kind of lack of expansion. But as I said, I do like the fact that it has a nice long shank that's been um, uh, retained. And the one thing that I really like to see is 100% or darn near 100% of its weight being retained. Well, I'm going to start switching gears here on my pack t testing and I really am going to return to the roots. I want to shoot some rifle rounds into this ballistic gelatin. I really, really am excited to take a look at the Hornady GMX. We're going to be doing that on the next pack t test that we put out. Hope you'll join us. Thanks for watching.